the U.S. Navy has kick-started the process of retiring U.S. Nimitz class. The U.S. Naval Sea Systems Command has awarded Huntington Ingalls Incorporated a $18.4 million contract to manage the initial planning for deactivating the nuclear power reactors on the Nimitz, the first stage of the carrier's decommissioning and ultimate disposal. The contract reportedly states that a deactivation plan must be delivered to the Navy by November 2024. The U.S. Navy's oldest aircraft carrier is scheduled to be deactivated by 2027, 49 years after it was put into service. This contract was among the many projects approved by the Defense Department on August 28. Naval Sea Systems has been tasked with overseeing the deactivation. U.S. Nimitz is the first in a class of 10 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers built on the same design. It bears the name of Chester Nimitz, a former five-star admiral who led the Navy during World War I. The aircraft carrier has served the U.S. Navy for nearly five decades, bolstering its combat power and engaging in a host of critical missions. It will be the first of the 10 Nimitz-class carriers to be retired. After spending more than half a year at the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard for what the U.S. Navy calls a planned incremental availability, the U.S. Nimitz set sail in June 2024. The Navy announced that the ship's flight deck and aircraft elevators were updated during the port stay, and the combat system and its berthing features were modernized. Despite being the oldest carrier in the U.S. naval fleet, U.S. Nimitz has been the flag bearer of U.S. power projection in the far seas. Last year, the Nimitz was involved in freedom of navigation operations inside the South China Sea amid burgeoning tensions with Beijing and increased volatility in the region. Before that, the carrier completed a historic 340-day deployment between April 2020 and February 2021. Earlier, the U.S. Nimitz was scheduled to be retired by 2025, followed by U.S. Dwight D. Eisenhower in 2026. However, because of delays in the commissioning of Ford-class carriers, the U.S. Nimitz's decommissioning date was moved forward by a year. Unlike the U.S. Nimitz, the U.S. Dwight D. Eisenhower carrier will continue in service till the end of this decade. The Navy earlier stated that there was an increased need for carrier strike routes to respond to global crises, such as the current tensions in the Red Sea and Taiwan Strait, which led to the postponement in the retirement of the Nimitz and Eisenhower. Notwithstanding the U.S. Nimitz's significance as a symbol of U.S. nuclear-powered strike capability, the U.S. Gerard R. Ford, a new class of supercarriers, is poised to carry on the legacy. Nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, which will remain the most survivable and versatile airfields in the world, provide long-range, persistent sea control, power projection, and organic sensing in contested seas, as well as flexible options across the spectrum of conflict, the Navy's shipbuilding plan released last year observed. The U.S. Nimitz was inducted into service on May 3, 1975, by former American President Gerald Ford, in whose honor the U.S. Navy's latest supercarrier is named. These advanced carriers are believed to be the biggest ever built in the world and boast cutting-edge capabilities that will give a massive boost to the U.S. Blue Water Navy. U.S. Ford carriers are the biggest, most powerful. The U.S. John F. Kennedy, the newest carrier of the Ford class, was supposed to replace the U.S. Nimitz in 2025, as per the original plan. Two more Gerald Ford-class vessels, the U.S. Enterprise and the U.S. Doris Miller, are currently under construction. The U.S. Gerald R. Ford, 
The first of this class is widely regarded as the most advanced aircraft carrier. It is the world's largest warship and boasts exceptional dimensions. It measures 1,092 feet, 333 meters in length, with a beam of 256 feet, 78 meters at its flight deck and a height of 250 feet, 76 meters. The carrier was deployed to the U.S. Central Command, or CENTCOM area of duty in the wake of the Israel-Hamas war that started in October 2023. At that time, a statement published by CENTCOM read, the United States has begun moving U.S. Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group to the Eastern Mediterranean. This includes the U.S. Navy aircraft carrier, U.S. Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, the Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser U.S. Normandy, CG-60, as well as the Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers, U.S. Thomas Hudner, DDG-116, U.S. Ramage, DDG-61, U.S. Kearney, DDG-64, and U.S. Roosevelt, DDG-80. Before this deployment, the Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group had been in the Mediterranean Sea since June 2023, when the U.S. decided to resume a constant presence in the region. This marked the Carrier Group's first full deployment. The U.S. Gerald R. Ford is the world's first aircraft carrier to be outfitted with an electromagnetically powered aircraft launch system. EEMALS, compared to the conventional steam-powered catapults of the Nimitz-class carriers, ENALS has several benefits, such as smoother acceleration at both high and low speeds and more precise end-speed control.